a symbol of Japanese culture, tatami. Not only does it bring comfort and relaxation, but it also exudes a dignified elegance. It's a uniquely Japanese culture, created from the Japanese climate with its four seasons. This is one of the oldest existing tatami. About 1,300 years ago, Empress Homo laid it on a wooden platform called Gosho and used it as bedding. The word tatami was derived from tatamu to fold because it was stored in a folded form. During the Heian period, tatami became a symbol of authority and only the emperor and aristocrats were allowed to use it. In those days, it served as a kind of cushion used only where necessary, not for the whole room. It was not until the Muromachi period that they covered over an entire room. However, the edges of the tatami were strictly determined according to status. By the way, these plain ones used in homes today were used by the aristocrats. The highest ungenberi were for emperors and emperor emeritus, and daimonko ragberi with chrysanthemum crests were for princes and ministers, and so on. The edge was an important sign of status. This is the Daikakui Temple in Kyoto, which is closely associated with the emperors. You can actually see the edges of tatami, used by different social statuses. This is the Okanmuri Noma, where the retired Emperor Goda conducted cloistered rule in the Kamakura period. The edge of the tatami in the front room is plain, and the back room has kowarai berry. In the innermost part of the room, in the room of the retired Emperor's Okanmuri Noma, the finest ungen berry is used. The reason why one should not step on the edge of tatami is that it was considered impolite because it represented status and family lineage. Then, in the Edo period, tatami became widespread among the common people and became an indispensable part of Japanese architecture. Kyoto, the birthplace of tatami, the capital of Japan for 1,000 years. There is a young man here who will weave the thread of this tradition into the future. He's Katsushi Migake, a tatami craftsman. Mr. Migake became a craftsman in his teenager and is now in his 17th year. He has worked on the tatami for many shrines and temples, including Chionin, which is deeply connected with the Tokugawa family. Today, due to changing lifestyles, the amount of tatami has decreased by one-third in the past 20 years. To preserve the tradition of handcraft, Mr. Migake continues to work as a craftsman and also teaches at a tatami vocational school. Tatami is a familiar thing. However, there are many things that are not known. One of them is size. The larger one is Kiyoma in western Japan. The smaller one is Edoma, used mainly in the Kanto area. Kyoto, houses were built based on the tatami. On the other hand, in Kanto, tatami were fitted after the house was built, so the size became smaller because of the pillars. Moreover, the way they are laid out also has a meaning, for example, in the case of a six tatami-sized Japanese style room. Fusukugiiki, with cross-shaped corners, is used for a funeral or other occasions. There are still more secrets of tatami that you may not know. This is Tenei in Kyoto, with a magnificent view of Mount Hiei. 
The gate is called Gakabuchimon, framed gate, because the view from the gate looks like a painting. Tatami were being changed in the main hall of the temple. This time, 215 tatami mats are changed. First, tatami that were swapped due to sunburn or damage are returned to their original position. Actually, each tatami is a different size and shape. The exact dimensions are measured in the original positions. How much smaller or larger it is than Kiyoma is measured. Particular attention is paid to the pillar. Tatami are straight on the inner side of the room and fit the shape of the room on the side that is in contact with the pillars and partitions. You definitely have to get rid of this kink at this pillar location or it'll stick out and not fit in. There are other gaps and unevenness. A single tatami mat in Kiyoma weighs approximately 35 kilograms. Everything has been carried out. The structure of a tatami mat consists of a tatami doko base covered with a tatami omote surface and a hairy edge attached. Old edges and tatami omote are removed with a tatami knife. Tatami omote that was cut short is attached to waradoko straw base compressed with straw. The gap is thus filled by adding the length of the tatami. In addition, the unevenness is adjusted by putting igusa, soft rush grass, in the corners. Tatami surfaces are made of igusa. Currently, 95% of domestic igusa is from Kumamoto Prefecture. Dying with mud prevents discoloration and brings out the luster and unique scent of tatami. There are 6,000 to 7,000 igusa plants used for each tatami mat. Extra parts are cut off according to the dimensions. The cross section must be vertical or the edges will be distorted. The edge to be put there this time is the Chumonko Iberi, used in shrines and temples. Sewing with stiff Harisi Tagami, under edge paper, gives it shape and reinforcement. After sewing is completed, it's carefully folded over. The way the edges are attached, changes the appearance of the room. Thus, the tatami is reborn. New tatami mats are installed in the main hall. Once you finish laying it down, the crests of adjacent tatami mats match precisely. The weaves of the tatami are also in a straight line. The gap disappeared and the unevenness is gone. And it's now perfectly in line with the pillar. The main hall is filled with the gentle fragrance of Japanese rush grass. After this, we'll look at the best part of tatami. Priceless hand craftsmanship. This is Washimizu Shrine, a world heritage site in Nara Prefecture, which was the imperial palace in the Nanbokucho period, roughly 680 years ago. Here you can see the prestigious tatami mats. 
This is the throne of Emperor Godego. Colorful Ungenberry is seen on thick tatami mats. The term Ungen means a circle of light spreading around the sun or a moon, and it's woven with silk. It's still used for imperial ceremonies. And the Ungenberry can be seen on the Takamikura, the throne where the emperor performed the coronation ceremony. This time, Mr. Migake will make a Oedetami, eight-layered tatami. It's made of multiple layers of Ungenberry and is the highest grade of tatami and the symbol of tatami. First, Dai Datami, the base of the tatami is made. The essential Kamachita, style board, is shaved with a tatami knife. The Waradoko, straw base, is cut into squares, based on the dimensions. The Kamachi Ita is sewn to it. The four corners were cut diagonally and stacked to have the thickness of one piece. The height of the Daidatami is adjusted by stepping on it and tightening the strings. How precisely the height is finished changes the beauty. When you step on it, you can tell the Kamachiita and the Waradoko are now one piece. When Kamachiita are attached to the back and front, a board called a Hashira pillar is placed between them. A height is not allowed to deviate by an inch. The height of the Daigatami is fixed. Next, six goza mats and tatami omote, tatami surface, to be placed on top are cut. Wasi, the Japanese paper, is applied to the cut edges of the goza to prevent the ikusa from fraying. The cut edges of tatami are left untied. Tatami are wrapped with threads to make the texture of igusa more dense and strong. When all the parts are assembled, the ungenberry, the edges, are sewn. Each piece is cut to its own dimensions. The Japanese paper and the paper under the edge are sewn together. And when folded back carefully, they are sewn on the sides of the daidatami. At this point, we can see why the height of the daidatami was made so precise. The height was calculated to be the same as 2.5 pieces of diamond pattern. After this, the gorgeous Gadatami is completed. The height of the completed tatami is matched to the corners of the diamond pattern. Ungenberry is attached to goza mat and tatami omote, tatami surface. Beauty is created by a series of detailed works. It's a delicate process that even the thickness of the thread can have an effect on. After finishing the Ungenberry edging, it's stacked on top of Daidatami. 
紋がずれへんように止めていきます The nails are carefully hammered into place Two or three more sheets are stacked on top Then a small gozer with no edge was placed between them Then a fourth layer is placed on top of that ヘリの厚みで真ん中がたわんでくるんでそれを見越してここに一枚ちょっと幅の狭いやつを入れます This is how the difference in thickness created by the overlapping edge is adjusted Looking at the pattern more closely the fourth piece forms a single diamond 零点何ミリずつ動かしてとかやらんとしっくりこうへん仕上がりになってくるんで気使ってやってましたね。And they finished stacking all six sheets. The thicknesses of the sheets are beautifully aligned by the gozer placed between them. The tatami omote, tatami surface with the ungen berry is sewn as if wrapping it around. Attention is concentrated on the needle point. If the force isn't right, it'll damage the silk fabric. One cannot be too careful until the last stitch. And the Gaeda Tami is complete. It's a multi layered, colorful Ungenberry. The form is full of elegance and radiates divine beauty. This is Hoyoke in Kyoto, known as the Tatami Temple. Today, a Tatami memorial service was being held to honor old Tatami collected from all over the country. Mr. Migake was in the main hall of the temple. He says that he wanted to show people the production process to tell them that tatami are excellent mats suitable for the four seasons. Tatami is a unique Japanese culture. When you touch the depth of it, it makes you feel glad to be Japanese once again. The history that has lasted for 1,300 years will be preserved by these young people. Opening the door to tomorrow, we take another step closer to our dreams.